Um, so this trip has kind of come out of a number of different things. So Bo and I both have a heart for missions and missionaries, and we saw that there is a lot of times a disconnect between missionaries and specifically sending churches and things like that. And so our heart for this is to be able to bless those missionaries. They're some of the people that could utilize video more than anyone else, but they're some of the people with the least amount of resources to actually do that. And so kind of the model that we have is we have a donor base through Patreon, and people that love the work that we do give there, and we take those resources and we go out and provide videos for missionaries. And so that's kind of um, the model that's worked locally, and now we're really excited to be able to go beyond into overseas stuff as well. And that's dead on. I remember standing in front of my church of three or four hundred people, and I looked out in the audience and thought, I wish all of these people could see the work that God is doing across the world, from Africa to Slovakia to Cambodia, and they don't have, well, the resources, first of all, for a missionary to host three or four hundred people, but using today's technology through video and our skill in storytelling, we're going to take that and go ourselves. And our ultimate goal out of this is to wake up the church, get them involved with what these incredible people are doing out in God's kingdom. Uh, so I don't know what to expect with this already. We've had a few curveballs. Um, hopefully Hayden will feel better and he won't die on the trip there. Uh, we are about to start boarding in just 10 minutes as we go to Chicago and then to Munich and then on to Budapest and then finally into Slovakia. A lot of adventures and I'm just absolutely delighted that you guys are uh, following along with us through our own homegrown documentary. Let's do it. Just woke up this morning and looking right outside our window, there's some sweet looking cars that we don't have in the United States. There's this green building, beautiful morning. Oh man, but look at these mountainous hills, I don't know, probably mountains. And then way out in the distance down there, Look at those guys. Hey, Bo, you almost ready to go? Yeah, yeah, ready. Let's go. All right. Whoa! Oh. You always sleep like that? And this place 
is so much more cool. During the day when you can see something, I mean, goodness gracious. This morning we filmed Stephanie. She is an on-fire Christian here. She teaches English. Uh, specifically, we sat in on her uh, Bible class and it was really cool hearing her talk about the Ten Commandments and um, very, being very, very point blank about the gospel, uh, talking about Jesus and the good news, uh, really just a fire in her belly for sharing Jesus with these kids. Did you know statistically, most people come to the faith and hold on to that faith when they're in high school? That's like the turning point for most people. As a matter of fact, most people watching this may be like, yeah, it was high school. That was like the moment where I was like, I gotta get my act together, me and Jesus. God will not just work through us holding a camera, but also after we're done hitting record, uh, it seems like that's where most of the, um, that, that's where you see Jesus the most, it seems. Uh, anyway, okay, off we go into the school right here. We've got another classroom to film of another missionary named Clara. Really exciting. I came, like I wanted to help or I wanted to make a difference, like all those vague things that we can tell ourselves to make something crazy sound like a good idea. And to explain to all the family members who want to know why you're uprooting your life or all the people at church or who are wondering. But the ministry, I guess, sort of shifted and my, my like desire for sharing the gospel kind of shifted because it wasn't anymore like this um, evangelizing thing, but it was like people that I really love and that I like genuinely want them to know Jesus. Like God has reminded me so often of the story in Esther when Esther's like pleading for the life of her people and she says to the king like, this is what they mean to me. And I've thought of that very often because this is like my prayer now. Like, God, this is what these people and these kids mean to me. So much of it has been rooted in like building that relationship, building those relationships, um, coming to a place where we enjoy each other and we care about each other. And, and because I do believe that Jesus saves and that Jesus brings hope and light and redemption, um, even into the darkest places, like I want them to have that hope too. I feel like my role here is kind of twofold. Um, I'm working as an English and religion teacher, so I'm teaching uh, regular classes for some of the upper classmen at EGT. And then I'm also here as a mission partner through MCN, and I see that as uh, like a role of building relationships, uh, kind of acting as a mentor um, to these kids, and ultimately just building trust and being someone that they can talk to about tough issues because it's high school and no matter what country they're in, like this is a time of life where they're starting to explore difficult questions. We had this class about uh, one of my favorite stories, which is um, Jacob wrestling with God when he wrestles with the angel. In that story, Jacob like wins the wrestling match until God like touches his hip and puts it out of joint. And we're reading this and the student, Jujo, he just started laughing, like kind of flat out disrespectful laughter. And it surprised me very much because it was very unlike him. And he like can't even really contain himself. He just like bursts out between like laughter. God is weak. You know, everyone looks at me, what's she gonna do? Like he just, she just, he insulted your religion, your God. And I knew like how I reacted would be very important. And. I, I think like the Holy Spirit really sh showed me something in that moment like that I'd never thought about that story before because he said God is weak and so what I said to him I said um, I think that's exactly that's exactly right and they all kind of look at me because they weren't expecting that and I said can you think of another time that God like came down in human form and let himself be weak and let himself get beat up by humans um, and let himself even die and they all kind of look at each other and then one of them said, 
well, Jesus. And it was just this awesome, like one of my favorite moments of my entire time here because the gospel just got to be there and it got to be so like honest and in this conversation and all of them are listening. And, and I think that's the hard thing to like wrap our minds around that God would become weak and that God isn't so like full of his own godness that he he stayed up in heaven to like lord it over us but that he actually came and walked among us. I have a lot of hope with this specific student with all these students that maybe I don't get to see the the end result but I really believe that God is planting and and growing things. Well thank you so much for um, for listening and learning about Slovakia and our work here, I'm always looking for people to partner with in this ministry and I think that specifically takes like two forms. One is through financial giving uh, because it does take resources to do what we do here to, to send teachers to bring people to do English camps here um, to help students uh, get to the U.S. Um, but also and definitely most importantly is Prayer. It means a lot to me to know every day that there are people praying, not just for me, but for my students, um, for the school, for Slovakia. If you would join me in, in this way and, and partner with me to reach these kids with the gospel, um, it would be great. All right, so my name is Hayden Wilkins. And so right now we are doing what is called a MOM project, M-O-M, um, Megaphone on Mission. And so we put it on ourselves to go out and, and find that mission. So that's our mission is to utilize the skill and the tools and the passion that God has given us for videography to be able to bless other people with it. And so Bo and I started talking a little bit and seeing this vision for missionaries. Missionaries are people who can absolutely utilize the tools that we have for video, but they're some of the people least capable to, to do that in another sense. It's not on their minds, I've got to hire a missionary to get the word out there. And on the other hand, missionaries don't make a lot of money. There's not a lot of money in that, and so they don't have the means to bring us out here a lot of times. And so it's been really cool to kind of build this model that we're still building and need your help to build, but we have a number of supporters that, that believe in our mission and they, they donate every month, and we use those funds to go out and to be here in, pardon my pronunciation, Gior, um, Hungary, or in Tisovets, Slovakia, or later on, hopefully, we're planning on doing this all over the place. So we have these, these mini tours where there are high concentrations of missionaries, and so we can fly into Budapest, and in 10 days, even in a week, we could visit four missionaries, capture their stories, take them back, and it's obviously a fourth of the cost as opposed to taking four separate trips. So it's just highly efficient, highly effective, small team that's able to travel lightly, and something that we really um, are blessed to be able to pursue. Hello everybody, my name is Bo Shevasu. I am a missionary videographer. I am here in Gyor, Hungary. Behind me is a 50 foot high wall. It is a fortress surrounding a Catholic church. This church is over 500 years old. And why are we in this exotic place? A lot of people are like, well, you know what? You're a tourist. You're just walking along with your camera, taking photos. How are you justifying the missionary part of this? Well, we produce film for other missionaries. These projects right here are called megaphone projects. And we go out and basically have this megaphone of media and story crafting and filmmaking. And we put this megaphone in the hands of missionaries. These missionaries then take this megaphone and broadcast what they are doing, specifically what God is doing through them. And then the ramifications of people hearing that story is more support for those missionaries so that they can continue doing what they're doing. Because it's actually biblical, if no one actually can hear what you're doing, then there will be no support there. They'll have no impact. So we want to get their footage, their story out into the world so that then they can have more support and ultimately bring God more glory.
So I'm Clara Rich and I am the American teacher here at EGT. I'm one of four American teachers um, and EGT is a bilingual high school here in uh, central Slovakia. Tisavets is the village. I teach um, English classes and biology classes in English as well as New Testament. We're a Lutheran school and, and then also one of my uh, loves is music and so I am in charge of the choir along with one of the other American teachers and so that's a really fun experience to get to share the joy of singing with uh, my students. A lot of people ask me why am I in Tisavet, Slovakia? Why am I not in a big town or a big city or somewhere that's cooler? But I love the small town, I love the small atmosphere, I love having the mountains all around and especially I love the people. God cares about people everywhere and He is in Tisavets even though we don't always see Him. And so it's really exciting to be able to share with the students the love that I have for them, but that love is because God loved me first. And so it's just really cool to be able to share the hope um, that I have for something beyond what we see to just love these students and to get to know them, to hear their stories, um, and then to share mine with them. It's been really awesome to just get to know everyone here, become a part of the fabric of this community, and to pray that as I become part of this community, that God's light can shine through me and help transform the community into one um, that knows God's hope. The biggest thing by far that you can do is pray because God is the one who does the work. The Holy Spirit is the one who does the work. And so he hears our call, he hears our cry. Um, so pray for me as I build relationships, as I love these students, but pray for the students that their mind will be opened up. Pray that they will hear God um, knocking on the door of their hearts and that they will um, hear his invitation and hear his call and mostly hear the love that he has for them. So if you want to hear stories about what God is doing here, I would love to add you to my newsletter list um, to just see pictures and see the students, meet the students and hear about the lives that are being changed. Um, and if you want to talk to me, feel free to reach out via email, clara.rich at missionofchrist.org or via Facebook. Um, and I would just love to share the stories and introduce you to help you get to know Tisa Vets better. So Bo's back there, we just parked, and I am heading this way. We are in Gior, I think that's how it's pronounced. So we're just making sure we're in the right place before we pay for parking. And the hope is that the school where we will meet Sarah is right up here. And so that is the hope, and that's my mission right now, is to find Sarah um, and the school and then go from there. And on the top of the flag is not flying because there's no wind, but if you can see it right there, you can actually go up there and get a bird's eye view of the city. So you guys should totally do that. We are inside the castle now that you have heard about and if we go up the stairs and to the right, then we go to the top. And if we go up the stairs and to the left, then we go to the ex exhibition. It's like a museum area, I believe. So we're gonna do that now and take you along with us.
You almost got a broken camera. <laughs> The first time that videography really hit me that it, it, it could be such a powerful thing. I was in Mexico and on a mission trip and there was, after church we started filling this food truck and we, we filled it with all these supplies. I had no idea what was going on but eventually we drove an hour out to the middle of nowhere in this mountainous region and started uh, setting up chairs and it turns out they they had a church service for just a handful of people out in this mountainous region and so they took one hour for driving out there one hour for setting up one hour for a church service one hour for tearing down and one hour to drive back so they took five hours out of their Sunday to minister to a handful of people and that really touched me and that was the first moment I thought man if I was able to capture what they're doing there I feel like people would love to give towards this, they just don't know what's out there. So that was my initial vision for kind of what, what Knox Studio could do with these uh, megaphone projects is, you know, bring, bring the megaphone in and have missionaries yell, yell in them and get their message out. It's very impactful. We know that and see that how uh, movies can invoke our emotions and, and video does the exact same thing just within a, a shorter period of time. Oh, I get, I get really passionate about this in case you can't tell. And in case you're wondering where the tipping point was with this, this aha moment, was when I was with Mercy Ships in Sierra Leone. So giant floating hospital ships. And there I was in the belly of the ship. And I remember as clear as day, this little girl named Christina, she had cataracts, couldn't see at all. And I was there for the first time ever that this little girl's eye patches were taken off and she could see her mom for the first time ever. And there was just this quiet moment in the belly of this ship that was just shuddering from the waves and this eerie creaking noise going on. And through this silence and this eeriness, you could see this little girl have this moment with her mom. And I, because I had a camera, was able to capture it. I was very sensitive. I wasn't up in their face or anything. I was just quietly in the corner, zoomed in tight. And because I was there with the camera, that hit me. I can take this God moment to the rest of the world. It's not just two nurses, a doctor, and a video guy experiencing this. This is thousands of people experiencing God working through this organization and through these people. I thought, other people need story crafting. Other people need video. Let's go give them exactly that through Knox Studio. <laughs> Right now, through being a student um, and a, a classmate with many of the Muslim refugees in Germany, uh, to build relationships that allow the natural sharing of the gospel through through serving them, through um, creating opportunities to um, be real, authentic friends. And as we're doing shared tasks together, and learning German is a very strenuous, stressful task. Uh, we're put in situations where we need to rely on each other, and that's really important and opens exciting doors. With this group of refugees where we are together struggling through and communicating in this broken language, 
is way more powerful and intense and um, heart opening than ever my ministry as a, as a teacher was before. Being a classmate, um, I think, connects me with opportunities to share the gospel much more than being an authority figure. And that was something I'd never expected. One of the, the themes kind of of my life that I see God doing and teaching me in, in, the, in the narration he's creating is surprising me uh, at each point with something bigger than I've expected and often very different than I've imagined. And now being married, uh, taking my wife's opportunities and skills and abilities and passions and mine and putting them together into something that is uh, bigger and more intense than either of us have ever experienced or imagined is, again, uh, one of the, the great um, joyous surprises of being married and serving God together. Uh, in terms of German, the, the most honest answer is I have no idea how the Lord is going to use German uh, in my future, in my life. Uh, but I know that I'm called to really be here and learn it and to struggle through it. While I'm doing the struggling, he's opened the door to being with these refugees and as we both use, um, all of us struggle with the German um, and communicate in broken German, um, God is there in that brokenness of language. That's the cliche, right? God's in our brokenness. He's in the brokenness of words and uh, syntax as well too and working uh, among that to connect us in ways that are much deeper than any of the um, the things that we're trying to, to talk about, I think. After Annette and I got married and we moved to Germany, we both looked at it as really a time for preparation, where God was going to prepare us to become missionaries. We had no idea that learning German itself would become the ministry, and that God would put me in the middle of refugees who are uh, alone, suffering, trying to heal, um, and hungry for the healing that the gospel brings. Knock Studio is a nonprofit film studio, and we produce film for other nonprofits. And in times past, we have been hired by other nonprofits, uh, basically as an independent contractor, to be embedded with their teams to go out where they're serving and to film them. But we found that as we were out there, there are people who don't have the funds and resources to fly a videographer or two out to capture what they're doing. And so we, as a nonprofit ourselves, have taken it upon ourselves to ask incredible supporters out there, friends, family, churches, denominations who also love Jesus and put him first. And we ask them, will you send us as missionary videographers? Not to go necessarily to serve existing, established, large ministries, but to serve the least of these. And the least of these are those Christians who are out there who no one knows what God is doing through their ministry. And so we go and we live with them just for a few days. and We get to know them, their families, their struggles. And through this ministry of ours, we experience the highest of the highs and we also experience the lowest of the lows. Um, this is not an easy job. This is not a tourist going all around with a camera trying to justify this as a free vacation. There's a lot of emotional trauma that goes with this. Uh, I myself, uh, within the past seven or eight years since the incubation of Knox Studio, I've seen a lot of death, a lot, a lot of dying people. I see a lot of hurt people. I see a lot of bitterness. I see a lot of cynicism. Uh, I see a lot of people who are angry at God. And, uh, and then at the same time, you see people who are saved by God. You see, you see prostitutes in um, Zone 1 in Guatemala City who, who are crying out to God through tears how He has saved their life. Um, and then you also go to West Africa where you hear about little girls who are experiencing the worst of the worst possible kind of mutilation to their bodies uh, in order to gratify uh, witch doctors there. Uh, there's, there's just story after story after story that the church doesn't know about. And our goal is not to be that media presence to go out and shell shock and sensationalize stories that don't need to be sensationalized. Our goal is to go out and just present the truth. And then once the truth is there, we know that God will work through the church and He'll awaken His people. And either He'll draw more missionaries to these places 
uh, or he will draw more support, more finances, all because we are telling the story through a camera. Now that I'm looking at it, there, there are tons of benefits of this. One, churches, there's a disconnect between churches and they're sending missionaries a lot of times. And so that's one thing we really want to hit on is, is there some way we can visit missionaries that your church has and be able to help you guys get a real in-depth look of this is what it looks like to be in Slovakia or Hungary or this is what it looks like for our missionaries who are in India or Japan, wherever it is, and be able to connect connect you guys on a, on a better level. And also, in that sense, that will help those missionaries be able to raise support better. It will help them be able to um, just be more supported. It will be on people's minds more what their missionaries are doing with videos like these. The other thing it, that I'm really excited about is just getting the message out there of God is working in the world and there's a lot of stuff that's going on and I think a lot of times the United States is just so saturated with its own stuff and its own self. We don't look outside a lot and so to see what is going on in other places, especially on the mission field, I think is very beneficial. Lastly, I think this is something that absolutely could call more people to the field. And so we want people to, to see what it's like, see that it's not, it's not that difficult to be in Europe, you know? It, it, it's possible to go to India, it's possible to go to Japan. It seems like another world sometimes, but to get a glimpse into it, I think in this way with video is just a wonderful way to, to, to get into that, that world, I suppose. And so we're very excited to be able to be here and do what we are doing and be able to bless these missionaries as we're here. This is Győr. This is a city uh, in northwestern Hungary and it was built on four rivers. Uh, and it is also called the City of Meetings because not only do the rivers meet here, but a lot of people meet here. And I'm so happy that I get to be one of those people to meet people uh, to hopefully proclaim the gospel to more and more. I came here 10 years ago as a missionary and an English teacher. And I met my husband here and we got married here and we have three wonderful daughters. And I've continued to work uh, as a missionary and as a, as a teacher as well, um, organizing different programs and youth groups and now a baby mommy group, um, all for the purpose of reaching the, mostly, mostly reaching the English speaking community here in Jir uh, with the great news of Jesus Christ. Uh, we're also, obviously we do translation and we invite people who don't speak English because that message is for everybody. You know, I think where we are at, we are called to be witnesses to the gospel and my my maybe talents and abilities that God has gifted me with uniquely set me up to do ministry here in this place. And I'm blessed that I was sent here because I, I can see how God's kind of working it all together. So I think anywhere in the world is a mission field. And I, I have been teaching a boy for around six years. And when we first started meeting, he was absolutely like opposed to anything Christianity, anything God. We can't talk about that. He doesn't want to talk about that. And I've just recently seen him kind of opening up and asking more questions about Christianity, about religion, about faith. So, I mean, I, I keep praying for him and I keep hoping that, you know, he'll continue on this path. Um, but I can see like the beginnings of, of maybe how God is working in his life as well. A huge thank you to all of my supporters, especially those who have supported me throughout the years um, and continue to support me in prayer, financially, um, through sending emails, notes, um, all of those things are really, really important and really meaningful. Um, and really without support, I couldn't be here. That's the, that's the honest truth. Um, and I am always looking for people to, to support me, new people, people you might know um, in your church, in your community. Um, I love. I love getting to know people, I love partnering with people. A lot of people say, I can't be there, I'm so excited that you're there and that I can support your work. 
and I, I, I'm always looking for more people to come alongside me in this journey of sharing Jesus here in Hungary. Now we can uh, have 400 people go and visit these missionaries. Some people don't have the skill set to do that, but Knox Studio does. We are adventurers at heart, and we are filmmakers, and we have this reckless love for Jesus. Uh, we adapt quickly, we are quick to laugh, we are very gracious. Um, <laughs> we put our lives on the line over and over and over again. Uh, but because there are incredible supporters out there who are praying for us and saying, Jesus, preserve this ministry, that's why we've been around and that's why we are able to represent those three or four hundred people in a church and we can go back to them and say, watch this film. This is what your missionaries, this is what God's workers are doing out in the hardest places in the world. That is what Knox Studio does. If you guys are wanting to get involved with this, we, we definitely would love financial support. That's something that is, is really one of the big things that's pushing against us to be able to do this because the missionaries themselves, it's free of charge, which we have been so blessed to be able to partner with them. And they're, they're doing a lot to be able to host us in a sense and be able to work out connections and schedules and things like that to work with us. And so that's one thing that that we are really looking for is if you believe in this mission and want to get what God's doing in the world out to a, a broader audience, then it's going to take, you know, $1,500 in plane tickets to get here. It's going to take another $300 to rent a car for 10 days. But our, our goal in our heart is to be able to bless these missionaries and we don't by any means want to get rich off of this. Our goal is, is solely to bless them and that, that takes some fun. So if that's something that God puts on your heart, that's definitely something that's very big. Another thing is just stay involved. Like keep, keep watching the videos that we put out there, share them with other people, and definitely pray for us as we are, especially overseas on different trips and as we're in different places. Prayer is very, very big. I was very sick at the beginning of this trip and I did not feel good and it actually really, really helped that I knew there were dozens of people praying for me. That really impacted me. That's extremely helpful to know that, you know, we are being backed and, and sent on, on trips like these. Those are kind of the big things. We would love for you to get involved. And if nothing else, if you're interested and want to sit down and talk, Bo and I would love to sit down with you and just chat about how, how you could be involved, even something unconventional. We love to do things that are out of the norm and be able to just do different things and, and look at crazy ideas. All that to say, our goal is to glorify God and this is absolutely the direction that we feel like we should go. And so if your heart is in that same place, we would love to be partners with you. Thank you very much. And now it's time for Silly Exercises with Bo and Hayden, the part of the show where Bo and Hayden come out and do a silly exercise. Joining us today after Hayden downs a gulp of cappy is Hayden on an elliptical, it appears. I just wanted to thank Cappy for sponsoring this video because why drink anything else? That's right. It gives you the right exercise for this Wonderful exercise that you will do. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> it's a little bit, it's a little bit of a quicker turn than a real. <laughs> oh, that's reassuring. <laughs> I actually am a little nervous. 
This could very well be the last time you ever see me on film alive. Boy, if I had just got to use the restroom. Oh, oh hey, look. There's a creep in here with a camera. This is odd. Hey, hey. How's your day going? Oh, my day's going great. Hey. Huh? That sermon yesterday was pretty good, huh? I liked it. Yeah. <laughs>